Russian. <laughs> Good morning, guys. We are back with another video. We hope you enjoyed our White Line Rally Spring video. Um, today, we're going on a GR cruise, the first official cruise with uh, a couple of Sydney people. Um, we had great weather this week, except for today. It's been pouring, but that doesn't stop the commitment. Um, <laughs> Ash was telling me to put the radio down before <laughs> we get copyright. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we're going on a cruise today. We're starting locally. We're meeting up with a couple of guys from the area, and then <laughs> from the area, from the area, and then we're driving to St. Ives. It's about an hour drive, and then from there we're going to oh, I can't remember some lookout. Where are we going? Anyway, we're going to some lookout. I'll show you later. And then from there, they're going to lunch at Terry Hills, but we've got something on this afternoon, so I think we'll make it to that. But um, it should be good. We'll take you along. Same cars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's gonna be a few of us. Is it why they're all the same colour? Nah, it's just coincidental. They only came out in three colours, but I what think. What sort of car is it? It's a Toyota Yaris, but it's like a oh, race. This is the new one. Yeah. You know what? That's that's mine. That's an Echo. There you go. A really old one. I wanted one of these, but they're too fat to fit in my garage. I'm really they're big cars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. underneath the uh, umbrella there, personal guided tour and everything. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so as you see, the weather's shocking, but I'm going out in the rain for the boys to get some footage. So that's uh, Palm Beach over there. This would have been so good and it was sunny, but it's rainy and windy. There's water all over the camera. Sick. Nice little drive here. Hope you guys enjoyed that small video of the GR Yaris Cruise. Good turnout considering the weather was shocking, but um, can't wait to do another one. So, what we're doing now is, oh, I already took them out of the boot. We are installing 
the genuine Toyota brake ducts. As you can see, I'll take them out of the packaging, but pretty much just two brake ducts, four screws, four bolts. And basically what happens is, remove the guard liner, and those ducts go in here, as the Australian models are all blank. And we don't have brake ducts, we get ripped off, so that's one of the disadvantages of the Australian spec. Um, we are getting some rally versions, we're only getting 200 of them, they are all been allocated. Um, so you know what, just spend the 200 odd bucks on some brake ducts and I've got myself some genuine brake ducts that the models here don't get. So, first things first, jack it up, take the wheels off, look how dirty they are man, this brake dust is ridiculous, look at that, crazy. But hey, lucky they're ceramic coated. Um, let's take the wheels off. Oh, yeah. Okay, so wheels off. Um, as you can see, there's already two holes there indentation of where you're going to cut so that makes life easier um, so I'm going to remove all the clips that are holding this guard liner in I'll probably have to remove all of them I don't know if I'll be able to just remove those um, but I'll remove all of them get access to the bumper bar and go from there Okay, so guide liner is out, and now we have access to the brake duct. So, quick little tips. Um, I learned these tricks off uh, Mark Rogers on Facebook group of the GR page. These little clips sit there, like that. And what you gotta do is from underneath, get your hand in and push those two little, let me zoom in, those two little pins, there's one at the top Focus. There's one at the top there, there's one at the bottom. So you gotta somehow get your hand in there, it's a bit of a mission. Get your hand in there, push those two little pins together, pinch them, and then it'll give you some leverage to pull it out. Um, the other clips, these ones here, these are fairly easy. Removal tool or the little flat screwdriver and just slowly pry it out. Um, I did notice, surprisingly, one, one of mine was already broken, so. Don't know what happened there, but we'll have to get a replacement. So, um, what do we got here? Crash sensor, I think, or ECU, something, some sort of mechanism. Horn, fog light, um, that little cover there. Cool. Let's go get the brake duck and let's see how it sits. All right, so you've got the fog light wiring. Um, so this, from what I can gather, goes underneath it, so it sort of lifts it up. Let me just it. So that just literally just hugs the back of the bumper bar. So just let me get in there. You can't really see, can you? There we go. So yeah, it literally just hugs the back of the bumper bar. And then you've got your two mounting holes. So one at the top, one at the bottom. That's where you use your silver bolts, and then that will come out to your guard liner, which you have to cut, and you use your black bolts to bolt it to the guard liner. So, pretty straightforward. But firstly, we need to cut these tabs off here to expose the brake duct hole, and then just fold down those, um, those little tabs a bit so they don't get in the way. Alright, we've got an exposed brake duct hole. There's our piece. Cut the little tabs off, and now you'll be left with little nuggets there sticking out so we'll just um, cut those down fold them down a bit and then we can go on with the install so what I actually ended up using was um, just a small file tool like that and that worked to treat the plastics pretty thin so it's just easy to trim and if you have a look no more tabs just looks neat and now I can put the uh, brake duct on Nice. Two 
super bolt secured it and that's it now we gotta make a cut on the guide liner line that up and bolt it up okay so can confirm that the marking is slightly bigger than the actual brake duct itself now there might be a reason behind that where let me you've got that little bit of gapping after the hole see how it sits on there more than likely um, so I'm gonna cut it a bit smaller first and then see how we go I'm just gonna use like a Stanley knife of some sort or some side cutters As you can see, they do in fact come out a little bit, and then you put your bolts in. So it just comes out of the out of the guard liner ever so slightly, with about three or four mil, and they're nice and secure. Then you just bolt it in. Easy as that. All done. All mounted back up. Everything's back in place, and our brake duct looks OEM. So just a quick recap. So basically, remove all the clips. Um, you've got a 10 mil nut here, and that also has a clip behind it that you'll have to pinch and pull out. Um, clip up here, clip up here, two 10 mils under here. Four, one, two, three, four, five 10 mils under here, and two clips. These ones are probably the hardest ones. These ones here that I mentioned earlier. So they are the ones that you have to get from behind and pinch. So when you remove this bottom bit, you'll get your hand underneath, pinch it, fiddle around with it, and they just slide out. Uh, once you've done all that, <laughs> you cut off the tabs from the back. Choose a method to remove the little tabs. So I sliced them with the blade, then sanded them down with a file. Um, and then put your brake duct in, two silver bolts that you get with the kit and then your two black bolts to secure it to the guide liner. And then reverse everything, and that's it. So the first one took me about half an hour just to figure everything out, and okay, what time is it? 5.39. Okay, took me more than half an hour, took me about 45 minutes, um, just to sort of figure everything out and figure out how those little clips worked, because they were a bit of a pain in the ass, and then the best method of cutting that. So what I used to cut it was a, assortment of blades and the little baby side cutters to get out the main piece and then just trim the edges so I'm um, all in all wasn't wasn't overly hard the other side should probably only take me about half an hour 20 minutes um, now that I know where everything is and how everything works I did notice one clip of mine missing and a couple that were loose so whenever you get some spare time just check everything so that's one side done Awesome, I can now sleep through. And I still gotta do that side there. So, some people have been saying that because the air comes through, cools the brakes down as you're braking, it blows the dust out to the sides of the car. But, it's only minimal. Not a problem. Cool, so clean everything up, put the wheel back on, happy days. Second side done, a lot quicker. A lot easier now that we know where everything was. And this is what the front end now looks like. No more ugly covers. Just big leaf collectors. And we've also noticed while working on the car, it's actually missing a grommet that goes here. Sorry. That goes there. So there's one on the other side, but there's not one there. And you know, I believe that's used the truck drivers use it to tie the cars down because you can even see the mark where they've put the strap so there's two there one's missing and then underneath the car you'll find there's one there and one on the opposite side so just make sure he's got them and if you don't get some because all the water will just go into there which goes I guess into the chassis so 
Don't want water going in there. Thanks to my assistants, that did absolutely nothing <laughs> other than annoy me and question me. So there, there it is guys, brake duct in store. Not overly hard, pretty easy once you figure it out. The second side I did it so much quicker. Um, for you, those of you that want the part numbers, um, where are they here? So. Four of those, four of those, one of those, and one of those. And if you want to make it super easy, you can buy the guard liners as well. Um, but it literally took me like 30, 40 seconds to cut it out. The first one took me about a minute and a half. The second one I knew how to cut it and where to cut it. It only took like 30, 40 seconds, like I said. Um, yeah. So I've got one more addition that I've done. Well, actually, I didn't do it. I'll show you who did it in a second. But um, I'm going to close this garage first to show you. Okay, now that it's nice and dark, you can see the door handle lights that everyone should have. We've gone ahead and installed the footwell lighting. And as you can see from this, it's not very bright. So that's the driver's side. And you can see it's a bit more biased to the right-hand side. And that is the passenger side. But yeah, it's pretty dim. I'll try to get a photo and put it in the video of what its true representation is. With the uh, LED interior light, obviously it overpowers. You can just see it on the, on the uh, accelerator panel there. But like really truly overpowers it. While you're driving it might be a nice little add-on. It's a genuine Toyota uh, kit that we installed. Um, I had Paul from All Wired Up install them for us. Very simple kit. Um, I honestly just didn't have the time to do it and you know what, leave it to someone who knows what they're doing. So I recommended him, he was um, really good, smashed it out. And he said to me, and I watched the video on YouTube that there's actually spots underneath the dash for two of these kits and it makes sense because one's two bikes to the right side and one's two bikes to the left side and he could put it on either end. There is uh, space for two kits, meaning you'd have to buy two whole kits and then you can just wire them all up together. So I might may do that in the future just to have a bit more lighting. I'll see at night when it's proper dark and driving how it looks but it's going to bother me that it's more biased to one side. Um, but it's a nice little add-on that matches the door handles. It's got a switch so you can turn them off and on. Um, I'll probably just leave them on. But um, yeah, cool little addition. So I'll put the part number as well in the uh, description for that. Unless I've got the box. I've got the box here somewhere, one sec. Um, so yeah, it's not cheap for what you get, but you know, genuine Toyota, what do you expect? So this is it here. So what it comes with is the harness that taps into um, one of the ECUs. It gives you a pin out on what to do. Um, and then they all just link together. It's got fuses built in, everything. It's all genuine, so it works. And um, yeah, nice little addition. Might add another, but double the cost. So what can you do? Um, that's it for today's uh, video, guys. Can't get my words right today. Um, that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, let us know in the comments. Um, hope you got all those part numbers there and the next video on this boost I don't know what we're doing yet the exhaust should be here in a few weeks um, I really want to lower this thing now and head out back to the track again so maybe we should do some dyno runs want to see some dyno runs let us know thanks guys